And welcome. Big crowd. I don't know if the Citizens Academy or LJ has a bigger. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our first item tonight is the Citizens Open Forum. We only have a couple of rules that you keep it to no more than five minutes. You state your name and address clearly for the record. And uh, if you're speaking towards item 10, that is a public hearing, and we ask that you wait until such time as we call for the public hearing. Having said that, anybody on this side of the room? Gator. I'm Steve Gator Black, uh, 2010 Hudson Court in Oldmar. I'm here for two reasons tonight. <clears throat> no more challenges. <laughs> Um, first of all, I would like to thank the, the council for the check we got for Sean. We will purchase something in, in honor of him. Awesome. And secondly, uh, at the uh, last council meeting, we talked about uh, trees, and uh, I was asked if I knew a poem about trees. Well, I didn't know at the time that I didn't know one. Uh, when I was in high school, I had to learn this poem. And being a little bit advanced in age, I forgot all about it. Uh, this is a, a poem by uh, Alfred Joyce Kilmer. Uh, it was published in 1913 uh, in the poetry, in poetry, a magazine of verse. Kilmer's faith and love of nature was evident in his poem. He volunteered to serve in World War II and was killed in the line of duty. This is a poem called Trees. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the sweet earth's flowing breast, a tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray, a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair upon whose bosom snow is lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Thank you. That was nice. Before I call for uh, the next um, Citizens Open Forum, I think it's been probably two years, about two years where we did the Poet Laureate. Didn't quite go. Um, the direction it would for, did for a couple of reasons. Um, he's moved away and some other items. Uh, if it would be the pleasure of the council, I'd entertain a motion to have uh, Gator Black be our Poet Laureate you for got the city it. of Oldsmar. So moved. Second. Second. So moved in a second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Five nothing. Awesome. And Gator, I just want you to know that I have actually started my homework that you gave us. <laughs> you got all the words last week. <laughs> <laughs> In reverse. I've already told him I'm halfway done. Uh, <clears throat> halfway done, or are you uh, going to beat me? <laughs> no, I'm not halfway done. I did start, though. Did you really? I got one completed already from a non council member. I might have to get my words again. <laughs> Anybody else from this side of the room like to address the council? Anybody from this side of the room like to address the council? Awesome. Seeing no one, we'll close the Citizens Open Forum. A couple of recaps and some upcoming events on the Mayor's Minute. Uh, recap the annual Veterans Day ceremony at Veterans Memorial Park. Reading the newly inscribed names on Veterans Wall, it was uh, probably one of the more well-attended um, ceremonies we've had out there. It continues to get uh, better and better. A lot of us left there and went over to the Organic Community Garden Open House. That was on November 11th at Bicentennial Park. Congratulations to the Community Garden on a successful event. Great seeing the new programs offered each year. Um, if you get a chance to go over there, it's, uh, it's quite, quite nice. Um, celebrity Server Afternoon this past Saturday at Jack Willie's. Annual Goals for a Cause fundraiser. Thanks to everyone who came out, Eric and myself and Al and some others were out there. Um, this is a charity that uh, Goals for a Cause is, is a charity in and of itself. But what they do uh, in our uh, holiday sharing fund was the beneficiary last year. They select a charity, they raise the money for it, and then they, they turn that money over to another charity. Uh, and this, this year's beneficiary is the One Voice Foundation at Jack Willie's alone. I think last year, Deb, we raised about $2,500, $2,600. This year we raised $5,000. And that will be uh, added to the money that they raised from the hockey event. And I think last year, 
the holiday sharing fund got about 20,000, I think it was. So um, it's a great event. They have a senior hockey tournament over at the ice rink, and uh, it's a great thing. You'll see it, I think, on – they didn't do it today, did they? Was today Charlie Belcher? When's he? Oh, it was, okay. Um, they, Charlie Belcher talked about it. So um, another event that we had was the, thanks, the Thanksgiving bounty distribution that was going on today at Oldsmar Cares. I saw the line uh, driving down there all day long, so helping those that uh, can't help and provide Thanksgiving for their families. Also, uh, at lunch, Al and I and, and my, the vice mayor stopped by, as did some um, residents. Gator was there with his lovely wife. Uh, lunch with the mayor at McDonald's, they requested it a couple of months ago, and so we did that. They want to really be more involved. We're going to try and set one up with the sheriff's department uh, in the near future, so look for that. Upcoming events, Thanksgiving holiday, reminder that all city offices, facilities, and libraries will be closed Thursday the 23rd through Sunday the 26th for Thanksgiving. Normal business hours will resume on Monday the 27th. The Santa Claus mailbox beginning on November 27th through December 18th. The bid red box will be at the front of City Hall. Kids can write a letter to Santa and he's writing them back. So be sure to include your name and address and the child's name. Uh, the annual mayor's breakfast. This is uh, being held Friday, December 1st, 7.30 a.m., the Safety Harbor Spa. Um, tickets are $25. You can get them at utbchamber.com. Uh, that is where myself and the mayor of Safety Harbor uh, host the event and uh, raise money. So uh, well attended every year. Christmas Wonderland is also that Friday, December 1st, 6 to 9 o'clock, R.E. Olds Park, snow sled rides. Uh, pictures with Santa, holiday movie, Masuda's dancers, reci dance recital, and caroling. It's free to attend. We got a sled ride hill if you've never been there, so a lot of fun. I'm going to see if I can get Al to go down it. <laughs> Make I, it last. I added that part, <laughs> yeah. Annual tree lighting ceremony. Uh, that is Tuesday, December 5th, 6 to 7 p.m. at the steps of City Hall. Join the city as we officially turn on the lights of our Christmas tree. Oldsmar Citizen of the Year, Sharon Edwards, has the Honors Countryside High School Band and Choir performing. Plus, it's a visit from some jolly old fellow will be there as well. It's, that's another one that's pretty well attended right across the street. So come out and join us. It's, a, it's kind of a real community event. So that wraps up the Mayor's Minute. Um, we have nothing in the CRA, a consent docket. We have a couple of items. I'll read those. Approve the payments to legal counsel. Item two, authorize the city manager to advertise request for proposal 2018-002 uh, RFP for HVAC repair contractor. Also accept forfeiture of a veterans advisory board member, uh, board alternate member seat. Uh, item four, approve the request to waive the bid requirements and award purchase of a John Deere 310 SL loader backhoe to Nortrax under the same terms and conditions as the Florida Sheriff's Association Cooperative Funding Cooperative Purchase Program, contract number FSA 17-VEL 15.0 PB 18-001B. Item five, approve the tentative agenda for December 5th. If nobody wishes to pull anything, I need a motion. So move. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes five nothing. Thank you. Next is our city of Oldsmar. Our first item is the presentation of the employee service awards, and our city manager, Mr. Al Braithway, will do that. Thank you, Mayor. Firing them up. Yep. Very excited tonight. We have two service awards. And we have another council manager award, and I'm honored to be able to present them all. As you can tell, I don't need a microphone. <laughs> well, I'm guessing everybody can have one. Yep. All right, we'll go in order of seniority. So the first person I'd like to recognize is Sue Thierry for 25 years of service. <laughs> Congratulations. There's a little award. Here's the more important part. Thank you. Chuck. I've got a little speech. <laughs> this is Sue and her husband, Pat. Um, her date of hire was November 10th of 1992. So she's been a library assistant for the city for 25 years. Wow. She works at the reference desk. She started in the children's department. The employees of the Ellsborough Library are among our many unsung heroes that come to work every day. They're usually quiet. He is a very strong example of that. <laughs> okay, that's why I can never work in the library. Very unassuming. They go about their business and then wait. 
you need something. You don't know how to get it, so you find Sue, and you ask for help in how to find something. Then you watch this transformation. They come alive. By the time you're done asking your question, they have five different things for you to look at, and that's if it's a slow day. From personal experience as the son of a lifetime public librarian, I'm embarrassed at how much more they know about how to research a subject than I do. Embarrassed, yes, but more importantly, impressed. Today's library is more relevant than ever. In case you were ever thinking that library employees don't have enough to do, think again. For 25 years, Sue's been involved in the customer service business with a committed eye towards process improvement every single year. And remember, she was with the city before the building even stood. She was hired by Nancy Mellican. She worked for Bert Weber. She now works for our Sue Hurley. Her many duties include, to name a few, she's reference desk customer service in person, on the phone, online. She assists patrons with the library computers and databases. And I'm taking a side note there. I promise you, go to the library and look at the databases. You will not believe the information you have access to. It's, it's absolutely incredible. I just kind of learned about it last year, but it's absolutely phenomenal. Part of the Reader's Advisory, she assists patrons and trains employees on books availability and online sources. She provides and updates the How Do I service, which are frequently asked questions about library cards and services. She assists patrons with library catalog research for summer school reading lists. Parents take note of that. She provides a service on library tips like how to find large print books, how to renew library items, how to find business books, how to find books, audio books in the library and online. She prepares displays like Business Careers and Education and the SCORE program, Service Corps of Retired Executives, holiday themes like folklore, cookbooks, and crafts, cookbook displays supporting the Florida Cuisine program with Chef Warren Caterson. She works on providing publicity for programs like Crafty Sundays, sorry, Saturdays, <laughs> Kids Cyber Safety, SCORE Workshop, Rockstar Cafe, Pet Supplies for Fines, Beginner's Ukulele Workshop, Overcoming Clutter Workshop, a good one for my wife, Cooking Demonstrations, good thing she's not here, Food for Fines Food Drive, and Holidays at Hogwarts, which I think is a Harry Potter thing, isn't it? Um, my grandkids are helping me here. She maintains communications issues with other co-op libraries. She maintains information for inclusion on library flyers and distributes them. Just ask the Vice Mayor. Maintains a relationship with Goodwill and seeks out other community organizations for leftover resources, which includes processing incoming book donations and withdrawn items, online book selling and shipments, preparing items to the November mini book sale. Has that happened yet? The November mini book sale? Sorry, I missed it. Other things that Sue is or has been involved in. She's been a member of the city's sustainability team. She's been on the EAC, which is the Employee Action Committee. She was nominated for the Brunson Streckengost Award in March of 2012 for helping to raise revenue for the city. Love hearing that through her work with the Friends of the Oldsmar Library. She was our city's corporate community representative for the Pinellas County Schools Volunteer Program from 1993 to 1998. At one time, Sue was involved with the city's communications and marketing division after it first started. I read 25 evaluations in her personnel file. All, every single one of them, every category was rated either A or E, which means exceeds acceptable standards or above acceptable standards. My observation about our most valuable employees, and I see this a number of times, and you read supervisors say in evaluation, you love to see this. Two of my favorites that were on almost every one of Sue's. Shows concern for the efficient running of the department, and another favorite of mine requires little or no supervision. Love seeing that, absolutely love seeing that. You want all your employees to be like that. Sue's evaluation sounded like a broken record on those two statements. What a wonderful tribute to a great employee. There were five comment cards in her file, all complimentary about her helpfulness and ability to assist citizens in finding what they were looking for. She received the Perfect Attendance Award in 2009-10. What I'd like people to recognize most in Sue is not just her longevity of 25 years, which is impressive all on its own, but in the dedication she has maintained in both, to both the library and the community. Most people are capable of coming to work each day, but very few make a sincere commitment to making their community a better place and Sue has epitomized that attitude in her work and her career for a quarter century. Please join me in congratulating Sue on her 25-year milestone and thank her for her service to this great community.
I see. Okay. Would you like to say something? Pat, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah she's got it. I do, obviously. Um, I've been here for 25 years, and I just like it. I like, I enjoy helping people. It shows. I do. Thank you so much. Thank you. She's one of the reasons we have an award-winning <laughs> library. Congratulations, Sue. Congratulations. Good job. Okay. Second one is a 15 year service award for some guy named Adam Shore. <laughs> I didn't play theme music. <laughs> I was going to. This one's going to be tough, and not for why you think so. Young man, there's your 15-year service award. I'd give this to Audrey, but she's not here. It's less it's an actual check and not direct deposit. It is. Trust me. Okay. Adam's getting his 15-year service award. He's an IT administrator. He's our information technology administrator. His date of hire was November 25th, year 2002. Um, I was anticipating maybe the family was coming. His wife is Audrey, his son Jacob, and daughter Shoshana. And LJ, who comes to you, as I remember Jeremiah, and I don't know the rest of your kids' names, so you're going to have to tell me. <laughs> We're here to celebrate a large milestone with another one of our many talented employees, Adam Shore. I was on the committee that hired Adam. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> and I must admit that this service award is difficult for me. Adam was my teammate for eight years and worked for me for another seven. The hard part isn't that it's going to be difficult to find something nice to say about him or his skills. The hard part is that after I do, he will run around for the next five years telling everyone that I said nice things about him. <laughs> and I have recorded. In case you didn't already know Adam from any contact you may have had with him, especially Citizens Academy, he is not shy. In fact, I'm asking the city clerk to put the Citizens Open Forum five-minute clock on him when I turn over the mic because he will be ready to do a routine for you if we let him. And I promise you that's true. Okay, seriously, Adam is the division supervisor for what is unquestionably one of the most important functions of our organization. We have 11 buildings, over 30 servers in multiple locations. We own our own underground fiber network. We do TV production and recording. We have to maintain a wide area network with maximum efficiency and minimal downtime. Last year, we bettered our previous record with less than 1% downtime, which is remarkable. Adam gets calls at home, mostly from me, on the road, wherever he is, and is great at resolving issues as they arise. His staff is also great at making him look good. We have full, four full-time employees in IT, and we have zero turnover in his division during his tenure with the city. Cranach doesn't count. Something we think is very valuable, and he gets credit for that. Sorry, Adele, I know you're going to miss this. <laughs> IT employees are sometimes referred to as geeks, but I'm here to tell you that we have no geeks. We have really bright guys that cover the city flawlessly, maintaining over 100 PC workstations, 30 servers plus, network functioning and security, miles of underground fiber, the city's internet connection, the city's television production recording facility, which is pretty much right there, firewalls, several ERP systems, and pretty much anything in the city connected to or having to do with a computer. During his 15-year tenure, the city has upgraded all of the underground long runs of fiber, switched the city to the Microsoft Office 365 throughout, replaced PCs on five different occasions, averaging one time every three years, changed internet providers successfully, increasing internet speed to 100 megs in the process, and deployed hundreds of software and hardware products for operating divisions, totally managed all telecommunications devices like cell phones, smartphones, and iPads for the organization. He has assisted with upgrades to citywide software, like the handheld meters. He is responsible for the connectivity and maintenance of all citywide copiers and printers. He has upgraded projectors in the Tico room and FD fire department training rooms. In his spare time, Adam has been the appointed leader by his colleagues for the city's supervisors in our leadership development program known as OLDS on two different occasions in the past. He is responsible for the administration of the IT capital budget, 
which represents large outlays of taxpayer money, as you can imagine, and requires significant planning, purchasing, vendor relationship skills, and he has to put up with me. We try to focus on the many skills that each of our award winners possess, so you can see how necessary they are in the roles that make them such a productive, make this, excuse me, such a productive and functional family. In Adam's case, there's a couple of very important things, and to a degree, he may not receive enough credit for why they make him invaluable. First and foremost is his personality. During his early years, his good-natured playfulness was oftentimes mistaken for being difficult. He is a smart ass. <laughs> Slowly, over the next few years, people started realizing that he is actually very helpful and will do anything to help you as long as you're willing to listen to a joke or two along the way. The other two things are his greatest strengths. First, his ability to think on his feet. You thinking now? Yeah. His ability to resolve issues as they arrive is exceptional, me, as they arise. He thinks logically, he has great minds around him, especially Sue's husband, and seems to always be able to resolve any issues that come about. More importantly, he resolves them quickly. The other is his flexibility. He has no problem in trying anything we ask him to do or ask him to do differently. His willingness to accept any challenge has served the organization very well. We do owe him a debt of gratitude for his performance in this regard. On a personal note, I have seen over and over again what a great father and husband he is to his family. I want my city family to have people in it like that. Sometimes we have to be flexible in order to accommodate that strength, but in the end, it's worth it. High productivity division with zero turnover. Please join me in congratulating Adam on his 15-year anniversary of service to the city of Ulster and this great community. Also, get ready, because as soon as I give him the mic, He's likely to do, do this, uh, treat this as if this is his night at the improv. <laughs> Five minutes only. Make sure it's Start good stuff. <laughs> make sure it's, a, remember, it's a family show. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> I'd like to get a copy of that because my review's coming up and I want to make sure Cindy can cover all of that. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I, I've been working here for 15 years. Five years ago, I stood here and said I couldn't believe, I started, I was 30 years old, and five years ago, I said I've spent 25% of my life here working for the city of Oldsmore. And now it's a third of my life, and I have to say, the city's been very good to me, um, so thank you for that. I'd like to, a few people I'd like to thank. Uh, I'd like, I know she's not here, but I will thank Marnie Burns, because she's the one who initially hired me, and despite Al trying to convince her otherwise, I'm sure. Um, I want to thank Al. He's, you know, he was a good department head, and I think, they didn't ask me, but I think a good choice for city manager. I'm not just saying that, because he gave me a check. And I want to thank Cindy Neno, who's, hey. <laughs> Prop humor, you throw me off. I thank Cindy Neno, she's uh, uh, the director of admin services. She's been a great boss for six weeks, so I want to give her a thank you. <laughs> um, I also want to thank the guys who work for me. Um, Al did mention I have three people who just won't leave. Um, and <laughs> they've been with me for, two of them have been here since I started, and one of them I hired. I want to thank uh, Mike Hurley, Bill Dennis, and Ivan Johnson. I would not be standing here if they didn't make me look better than I was. So thank you. I also want to thank Cindy. Citizens Academy, for being here, how my Citizens Academy people, thank you very much. And uh, that's it. Thanks to the council as well. You guys, I'm glad you didn't eliminate IT or outsource us or anything. And how do you like these monitors? Fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Al, you forgot to mention that the, uh, the fiber optics that they're talking about, miles of it. <laughs> It was installed by the city employees with his help. We didn't pay anybody to put on to put in a fiberglass. Like now get back to work. And I'm sure our Citizen Academy remembers the video that he did. That was absolutely hysterical. That was hysterical. I thought, I thought maybe we were going to see it tonight. And I don't know if council notices, but we do have two big, huge new monitors for our audience that are in there. And, awesome. and wait till you see the workshop room. It's going to be even better for our residents that come to the meeting. So pretty awesome. Nice job, Adam. Don't mark that tape. Jack. Next. All right. This one I am so psyched out of my tree. Um, oh, sorry. That's a bad clip. <laughs> <laughs> no, that just came to me. Sorry. I don't have Adam's skills. Um, I have the honor of awarding the Council Manager Award of Recognition 
And the award this month is going to LJ Tucker of Tucker Enterprise Services. LJ. Yeah. Bring him up. <laughs> Come on, gang, let's go. Jeremiah, be a leader. <laughs> We're going to talk about daddy. You scared her, right? I do that to most women. Are we okay? I just want to tell you that this is called the Council Manager Award, but. Um, I think for this particular time only, I'd like to call this the Save the Day Award. And let me tell you why. First, a little history about the award. Mr. Beeblin brought this idea up at a council comments at a May 7th, 1991 council meeting. Uh, per the minutes, the objective of the award, the reason for the award is to give a certificate of appreciation for something that somebody had done for the city or their neighborhood. That's where the basics to it. It's been a long standing history for us for all those years. And how appropriate then to give this month's award to LJ Tucker and Tucker Enterprise Services. <coughs> LJ has a business, as you know, called Tucker Enterprise Services. Let me tell you a little bit about LJ and his family business. Tucker Enterprise Services is a family operated tree service and property maintenance company. LJ Tucker started Tucker Enterprise Services in 2002. He gained his first customers, now listen to this, he gained his first customers by riding his bike through the streets of Oldsmar and offering his tree trimming services door to door, and that is the truth. <laughs> Through hard work and determination, LJ, along with his wife, Adele, have grown this has grown this excuse me, has grown this company from working out of the back of his car to operating out of a two-acre facility over on Scarlet. Current and previous clients include the Florida Department of Transportation, Enterprise Rentals, multiple government agencies, cities and municipalities, as well as repeat residential clients. With its newly acquired property in Oldsmar, LJ is excited about the future of Tucker Enterprise Services. He will continue to provide quality tree care and property maintenance services to Oldsmar and the surrounding communities. Okay, now, that's a little bit about him and the business, but here's how we got here. A few months ago, asking you to visualize, the Chamber and the City do what we call We Mean Business, which, is, which are local visits in the city and surrounding area to accomplish two things. We find out as much as we can about the businesses we have here, and secondly, to let the business community know how seriously we take our business by trying to find ways to help them. As Jerry Peruzzi puts it, we're looking for the good, the bad, and the ugly. The mayor and I usually attend, that wasn't meant to be a joke on the good, the bad, and the ugly, as does Jerry and the current chamber president, who on this day was Mark Layton. Did I get the name right? Sir? Yes. Thank you. Sorry. I, I brain melded on the last name of the president of the chamber, I apologize. Anyway, on this date, several months back, one of our site visits was LJ and his new facility on 303 Scarlet Boulevard. He has five employees, new office digs, fencing around the property, beautiful landscaping in the front. LJ walked us through the yard. He told us about how his business has grown, where it started, and what his biggest challenges are. We left after the visit, very impressed with this young man, mostly by his determination and work ethic, and what is generally considered to be a difficult business. One of the great things about We Mean Business is in the things you learn about your community and many times in places that you didn't think would be all that interesting. For me, I was impressed by what I saw, especially in hearing LJ describe what he has built from what he had to start with, as you've heard. Talk about carving a living. Wow. <coughs> Fast forward to emergency operations, September 10th or thereabouts. Hurricane Irma is bearing down on the west coast of Florida as if it were a parting gift for Bruce's career, and trust me, Bruce was none too happy about it. The mayor and I are looking, are looking at each other after hearing one weather report say the hurricane is a cat category four and the eye wall is now projected to go right through Oldsmar. And while we were all counting our blessings because the eye wall moved about 50 miles to the east by the time it got here, we still have debris cleanup for a storm that has affected more Floridians than any weather event in history. Bruce is telling us over and over again, before the storm, during the storm, immediately after the storm, get a claw truck, get a claw truck, get a claw truck. Call Pinellas Emergency Operations, no claw truck. Call the insurance company Disaster Recovery Team, no claw truck. Call the insurance company, no claw truck. Call State Emergency Management, claw truck, no claw truck. Call FEMA, yeah right. 
Especially on the heels of Hurricane Harvey in Houston. Everyone is overextended and no one is available to help at a moment's notice. Hey, wait a second. Remember we recently visited LJ Tucker at We Mean Business. Maybe he has a claw truck. As you can imagine, we call LJ who is in high demand because he has two claw trucks and he pretty much can command his price. Well deserved for everything he has done to make this business grow, but LJ agrees to put aside some of his other business to help us get the debris cleared citywide. Our debris management firm didn't show up. Our debris monitors didn't show up. Our public works employees are busting their tail doing a fantastic job of attempting to pick up debris, one house at a time, but we were overwhelmed by the sheer volume and the lack of equipment to handle the task. As LJ will tell you, claw trucks can cost over $100,000 each. So LJ saves the day for the city. Eight weeks after the storm, Pinellas County homes are still picking up debris, and we're done in two. And most impressively, if you watched how hard his crew worked, you would never use anyone else in any property management or tree removal services you will ever need. LJ is another example of what makes this city great. He and his family dedicated themselves to a business that performs a vital service, yet when the city calls, he makes time and gives us his greatest effort. He empties the tank. I hope you all give serious consideration to LJ Tucker Enterprises. The next time you need property management or tree trimming or removal services, you won't regret it. This award is to show our appreciation for LJ, Adele, and family. We can't thank you enough for your dedication to this city and for your work ethic. We know that you've been recognized for your work with children, but we will never forget what you've done for us, making us all look smart for calling on you to help us get back to normal. Grateful appreciation to you and your family for another job well done. The citizens of Oldsmar deserve to know who made the biggest difference of all in our ability to get the streets cleaned and back to normal. Right there. Mm -hmm. Well, first, like I like to say, I'm honored. Thank you very much, Council, City Manager, Mayor. Um, this is my family, as you can see: Jeremiah, Michael, Olivia. What's your name? <laughs> and my beautiful wife, the brains behind the operation, Adele. And without my wife, my backbone, uh, the things that we're able to do wouldn't happen because we get the easy part. We get to go and do the physical labor, but a lot of the stuff is paperwork and business. And well, without the right paperwork, you can't get in certain doors. And we're very grateful. Um, again, starting at the back seat of the car, I, I, I got to tell the story. <laughs> I was riding my bike one day and I seen this house on a corner of Short Boulevard and was it Chestnut? Your old house. And I knocked on the door and I said, he said, how may I help you? I said, I like, my name is LJ Tucker. I like to trim your trees. He goes, I got a tree guy. I said, no problem. I left. A week later, I'm riding and the tree still wasn't trimmed. So I knocked on the door again. I said, what do you want? So I want to trim your trees. Do you know who I am? I said, no, but I'm still like to trim your trees. I'm the mayor of Oldsmar. I'm Jerry Beaven. I said, nice to meet you, mayor. I still want to trim your trees. Who <laughs> 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 you got? No, we passed, and I'm riding my bike into the city of Oldsmar, and guess whose trees are not trimmed? <laughs> I knocked on the door again. He's like, it's you again. <laughs> he said, you don't give up, do you? I said, as long as those trees are not trimmed, I'm going to continue to knock on this door. <laughs> he said, well, give me a price. I'm tired of you knocking on my door. <laughs> and the rest of the history, we became friends over the years. And um, again, thank you. I'm very grateful uh, just to be able to have the opportunity to help out in the city and try to stay economical as possible. My biggest goal when I first started was to to do at least 10 jobs a week at $20 a piece, I'll be able to pay all my bills. And I was good to go. And so, you know, I, I played the numbers game and uh, it wasn't to I really activate my faith to believe that I can grow and be bigger and uh, be able to uh, hit a rifle shot that I learned from my godfather. I like to thank my grandmother. She's in the, at the building. She's here. My mom, she was on the way. She couldn't make it. Uh, my concrete guy, Dave, my friend Don, he's here. Um, again, I'm just grateful to be able to provide uh, a tree service or 
uh, property server. You got Pat Lanford. She's a friend and a customer as well. Um, it's you know, I learned a long time ago. It's not about the money. It's about building the relationship and the allies. I have customers that's been using me for about 15, 16 years now. And it's like, Tucker's going to trim my trees. I'm like, thank you, you know. <laughs> and so we try to stay economical as possible and do a good job, because that's the most important thing to us, is to do a good job. Thank you. Congratulations, LJ, and to all your employees and your family. You guys are a class act, so thank you for bringing your family with you. Um, our next item is item number eight, pre uh, art presentation from the North Pinellas Arts Alliance and former council member Linda Norris. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. And Hi. Sam, Sam. <laughs> our arts coordinator. Um, Okay, so I'm uh, here on behalf of the North Pinellas Cultural Alliance, and um, we uh, have our winning design for the um, trail art. Sam's going to tell you all a little bit about um, how we came, you know, the selection committee and all that good stuff. Um, I have a copy of it for everybody. So why don't I go ahead and tell you how we chose this. We formed a, collect a selection committee with citizen representation as well as NPCA representation and Felicia Donnelly, lead, uh, head of leisure services. And we met twice. First time we, is this one on? Okay. First time we uh, met and voted on the three top designs, and then we met again with a point system to decide which design would win. Um, some of those items on the point system were like overall design, uh, experience, resume, things like that. And that's how we chose this design. And it's also, uh, it ticks off the boxes on what we were looking for for the trail art. Okay, so the um, original design that the ori it's working. Okay, the original design that Nicole put in was the this butterfly, um, and it we had to go back to her because our um, primer coat is black. So we were afraid, obviously, that this butterfly would not show up. So she switched it from. They're both native butterflies, so it was really nice that she did that. The first one was the zebra long wing, and then when we asked her to change it, she changed it to the pipe vine swallowtail butterfly. And it is a Florida native species and a resident of Pinellas County, so it fits. And. Um, we liked, about her design, what we liked is we could tell that, we also got um, um, copies of what each of the artists have done publicly. So these are bona fide artists, all the artists that we chose, especially the, the ones that were in the top three, they've all done large public art projects. So, and, and her resume, if anybody's interested, is amazing. It's three pages long and it's amazing and she's done a lot of work. Um, we like the artistry involved in this one and the vibrant colors. And she also pointed out that she is going to outline all of the fauna and all of the, you know, designs and everything in, in between the butterflies with white. So it's really going to pop off of the black top. Um, so what we're, what we are looking for today is you guys' approval um, to let us go ahead with this project. And it's. Um, going to be paid for through the funds that we have with the North Pinellas Cultural Alliance and it's our first project that we're doing for each city and we are the second city to get one. Um, Safety Harbor already got theirs but this one blows Safety Harbors away. Ours is way better. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else? No? How big is it? 
Um, well, the area that we told them that we wanted them to work is about 750 square feet, so it's going to be quite large. Okay. Um, it might not encompass the entire 750 square feet, but as long as it's prominent. We had one, we had, we had such great designs, and one of them that almost won was uh, um, animals and plants, but coming into the grass and then being finished on the other side of the grass. But we were afraid that you needed to be bird's eye view to really be able to appreciate it because you'd walk up and see part of things and then not really know that it ended on the other side. Um, some people were to the T as far as the outline that we, that we gave them in the, in the scope of work. Um, Nicole was a little bit outside the box. She kind of did her own. She didn't really fill the space, but it was such a beautiful design, and it it won by when we scored it. It it won by a good 20 points, didn't it? So it was definitely the favorite of of the um, three finalists. We got a lot of submissions, but when do you uh, when do you think it'll be finished? As long as y'all say it's okay, we're going to start right away. Not tonight. No. <laughs> Rain. Rain. Holiday. Yeah, I need a motion to uh, accept. A second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Yes. Yep. Yay! Yes. Born in Sheffield, right on that. It's going to be right when you, you walk come in. in, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Right I when ride you. Ride my bike through there. It's going to look awesome. Yeah, and it's probably more than likely going to be to where it's like that instead of like yeah. It's going to be. Uh, that Y section that when you first go in, right. it's going to be kind of like, like this. Like that. Oh, so it forks it off kind of? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Oh, and she's also going to, um, we asked her to punch up the color of the flowers as well. So, because we want it to really pop. So, and she was very, she was very accommodating for everything, you know, everything that we had asked her. So. Awesome. And if y'all are interested, I can give you her um, previous work and her resume. Would you like me to give it to Anne in case anybody? That's fine. Right. And I only have a copy of one of her previous works, but she's got a lot. Once you read her resume, you're going to – the um, oh, and the selection committee consisted of, um, of course, Sam, being the arts coordinator, um, Felicia Donnelly, our park and rec director, and she – did a lot to help us on the system that other cities use in order to come up with their choices, like the scoring and everything else. So she really taught us a lot. And then Suda, she was from um, Leisure Services, Ken Hannon, who's also North Pinellas Cultural Alliance, and Chris Hannon, who we all know is a fantastic artist. So we wanted to make sure that each of those you know, departments or we, everybody was represented to where not one person made the decision. It was a definite group decision. So, awesome. yeah, it was awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Very good. Is it done yet? <laughs> All we got to do is cut her the first check. I think. <laughs> good. Well, thank and you. And you know I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be out there helping her. You know that. <laughs> and, and thank you to the uh, North Pinellas Art Alliance, too. Cultural and our Alliance. thanks to them. Yep, oh. the culture. I got to point something out. I got to give Linda some credit here where credit's due. Because I think this is the second time that there's been artwork in front of the council and it actually passed unanimous. Yeah. <laughs> That's never Second time in what, eight years? Yeah. It's no, Jerry will say 15 or 20 years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. At, well, since 1990, 1996. It's exciting. We have some other ideas too. All right. So. Yep. And I think, it, I think moving forward, we're going to probably see some more. Art for the old Mar, so nice. hopefully that'll be great. So thank you. Thank you. Well, you, haven't thank seen you. The, you haven't seen thank The Last you. of Us, that's for sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, next item is the recognition of the 2017 graduates of the Janice Miller Citizens Academy, and this is going to be a team effort, I believe. Ann is going to introduce them, but I'll give you a little bit of a, a background on this. Um, this is our 10th year. I feel so cheated because I did the second year, and you guys do way more cool things than we ever did. We just got to go look at the fire truck. That's a fire truck. I'm like, duh. That's a police car. Yeah. 
but they get to actually interact with it and, and things like that. We never had helicopters landing at our Citizens Academy or anything like that, but it's all the brainchild of Janice Miller, and it was originally called uh, just the Oldsmar Citizens Academy, and before she passed away, it was the, that current council that I asked if it was the pleasure of the council to name it the Janice Miller um, Citizen, Oldsmar Citizens Academy because it was kind of her baby and she really took a lot of pride in that. She takes a lot of pride in the city of Oldsmar and I think the, the Citizens Academy have in the past and the one today will agree that you really learn a lot about um, the city and, and the things that happen within the city, uh, all the different departments, and really it's ultimately if you're an Oldsmar taxpayer, but it applies to whether you're in the county or another city that um, that it, it really shows where your tax dollars go. And and um, I, I'm not speaking out of school, but I think the, the departments really uh, take pride when they come. They get nine classes and uh, each department tries to outdo the other department um, and and it's it's great and they brag. Uh, Adam has about a 45 minute presentation that he could probably show you about about his that has to do with Star Trek so uh, that was that was pretty neat but they really do and it and they don't feel like they're being burdened um, by staying extra or working late to, to present that to you. They're really proud of their department. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Ann, and she's going to introduce uh, our Citizens Academy recipients. Oh, sorry, Mr. Beaverlin. I think, I think after talking, I think you're going to find it even bigger in the future. I think Al has some plans for it Good. to make it even bigger in the future. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, and we continue to find, I think, different ways to showcase our, our, our departments and everything, so. Well, I know that Kathy and I learn a lot when we go to Citizens Academy every year. <laughs> but I want to real quick give it Kathy Horvath a round of applause because she coordinates the whole... <laughs> our graduates this Sorry. year. Mm -hmm. Tricia Bokino. Yeah, come on up. Oh, and then when you come up, please stay up because we'll take a group picture. Yeah, Trish. Yay, Trish. She's in our office. <laughs> Gail Bullis, also a city employee. She was a receptionist at, or is the receptionist at City Hall. Yay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Joseph Crivelli. This is not the only class. I mean, do we have three city employees? Yeah. Yes. But I think it says a lot about the city that the employees actually want to spend extra time and learn. I think we've had, I think we've had employees in quite a few of the most recent classes. So. Yeah, they don't even live. Some of them don't even live in Oldsmar. Yeah, right. Yeah. Phyllis Crivelli. Eisenberg. Yeah. Freeman. Jan Freeman. Nancy Gannup. Marsha Hopkins. Denise Horn. Jefferson Hunt. Sam Hunt. Marianne Cruz. Estrella Star Lester. Here. Oh, Don's not here. I thought we were going to hit a home run on this one. Mary Ann Mann. Miller. Sid Norris. Gracia yeah. Richmond. Robert Schumann, Sandra Teeters, 
William Teeters. Sharon Vujanovic. Tracy Wallace, also from Oldsmore. That's a big group. <laughs> you want some of us to, well, that's going to be in the way. There are people in the back, shorter people to the front. We can get closer. We've known each other for nine weeks now. Yeah, now we're going to share the love. No scrunching, scrunch, scrunch. Sense of symmetry. All right, test photo. Okay, now. We're going to take one step to the left. Plus, are you 18? 17. 17, I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or she's not in finance. <laughs> If we didn't have a podium in the middle, this would be a really cool job. Can we, Dad, can we do this? Sure, sure. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. And hold that pause. I don't mind me. You want something? Not a chance, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Okay, great job. Before you guys disperse, does anybody want to say anything about the Citizens Academy? I think somebody does. I just want to say that I am very impressed by this. I've moved to Oldsmar four years ago, and I love it here. And I am very impressed because there are some very intelligent, capable people running this city. And I feel good. Excuse me, Joe? <laughs> and, and I feel uh, very proud to be part of it. And we learn something every single week. We learn something new. And uh, it was a great experience. I awesome. really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Jeff. Oh, is this thing wrong? Yeah. OK, I'm Jeff Hunt. And uh, I'd like to say the one thing about the Citizen Academy that really impressed us was getting to know the city employees. The ones that were in our class were so much fun, so informative, especially leisure services. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 my wife and I are very active um, in uh, the kayaking and outdoors and everything, and we're gonna get involved in some of the other leisure services too and give her all kinds of ideas <laughs> <laughs> and trouble. Yes, we have fun. Awesome. Thank you very much. After serving on the city council, I kind of did it backwards where I served on the city council and then I did the Citizens Academy, but I can tell you even after being on the city council for six years, I learned a lot in this class. And each department really did try to outdo the other. And everybody, it was just, it was funny, it was informative. Kathy and Ann worked their tails off. I mean, they, they were there before we got there and they were there when we left. Then also, we actually have to thank the citizens of Oldsmar because we were also fed each time. And so taxpayer dollars fed us each time, which was awesome, free food. <laughs> so yeah, anybody that hasn't done this academy, it's highly recommended. It is so much fun. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah, and also, and a big, definitely a big thank you to uh, the restaurants who really work with us on being able to, we used to go after them and try and get them to donate, but that's a pretty big task to ask to donate a lot of food. So they give us a great deal, and it's a lot of our restaurants that we have, and I'm sure we're putting letters together to send to them and thank them. And, and again, thanks to Kathy and, and Ann that do this. And I know the last one was a little bit of a barn burner, wasn't that right before your garage sale, I think? And so he, she was stressing out, to say the least. So thanks for having the interest in the city of Oldsmar. Congratulations.
news is, now that you're all graduates, there's a lot of committees that the city has. <laughs> now you're an expert, and there's always council seats that come up for election. So don't forget that. Thanks. Uh, where are we? Next item, uh, city attorney. Okay, uh, item number 10 on your agenda is the second final reading and public hearing for ordinance 2017-17. I'll read that by title only. Ordinance 2017-17, an ordinance of the city of Oldsmar, Florida, exercising the option provided by section 381.986, parent 11, B1, Florida statutes to ban medical marijuana treatment center dispensing facilities from being located within the boundaries of the city of Oldsmar, adding section 5.1.15 to article 5 of the land development code, of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Oldsmore, banning medical marijuana treatment center dispensing facilities from being located within the boundaries of the City of Oldsmore, providing for conflicts, severability, and effective date. That was the second and final reading of Ordinance 2017-17 by title only. <clears throat> this is a public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to address this item? Ooh, you almost got to address it, waving to somebody like that. <laughs> <Mary>. <laughs> Seeing nobody, I'll close the citizens of the public hearing portion of it. For discussion purposes, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion on this item? No, no. I, I, and I just want to say this. Um, as typical, I get blasted sometimes on Facebook for some of the things that, that happen. And, and uh, you know, I definitely defended the city's um, stance on this. And I think it's, correct me if I'm wrong, but the stance basically, well, some of the comments were, you know, you need to be more progressive. You need to um, think of the people that need them. It's a lot of the dialogue that we kind of had up here. And, you know, I, I quick, quickly responded by telling them, you know, that we can, we can undo this but we can't enact it if we don't if we don't pass something now we can't stick the genie back in the bottle and so um, this does allow us to control it right now until we can either change our pharmaceutical uh, regulations or uh, ordinances um, uh, or you know do something different but that we can't undo it but the amount of places that we could potentially have in Oldsmar with the current situation yeah. isn't good so I, th I, I feel and still do that it's a a good thing for the city of Oldsmar uh, and the residents so that we actually control how it happens and when it happens. You know, when we looked at the map, clearly there's some residential areas where you could potentially end up with a uh, dispensary at. Well, the other thing, of course, was the proximity of existing uh, dispensaries already. Right. That we we don't have man. to apologize for anything. I'm not apologizing. No, no, I, just, I know that. Yeah, yeah. You I, should plus I, I stand behind it. And just to that point, Eric, you know, I, we remember what we went through with the old Smart Cares building, and that, that particular building and piece of property could just as easily have been a pharmacy and a dispensary. So, um, by the way, the map is currently laid out. So, well, the residents at, are right there. Well, even at the work session when we discussed it, those dispensaries do deliveries. Yeah. So, they if can, someone needs it, they can get it. They can get it, and it's not that they're not that far. It's, the majority you know. of the people that voted for it was not voting for the the, the pharmacies. No. They, they were just voting for marijuana. Well, we talked about it. What was it like seventy something higher? We were higher than the county average. Extremely high percentage. But I think in that was more that approved it. Yeah. So it's not to not pay attention to that, including myself. Yeah. Including myself. Yeah. But hesitation was the fact that you might limit yourself on potential future tax revenue as it moves forward in yeah. the next couple of years. But well, and I think, you know. We want to have some regulation on where they go and yeah. those kinds of things. So. Yeah, sometimes it's not always best to be first. So let some of these other cities kind of work out the, the bug. So I do have a motion and a second. If there's no other discussion, hearing none, call the roll, please. Council Member Spedell? Yes. Vice Mayor Sarefi? Yes. Council Member McKee? Yes. Council Member Beaverly? Yes. Mayor Beavis? Aye. Ordinance 2017-17, adding Section 5.1.15 to Article 5 of the Land Development Code of the Code of Ordinances, banning medical marijuana treatment center dispensing facilities from being located within the boundaries of the city of Oldsmar, is passed and adopted with five votes for and zero against. Anything else? Um, that's it for right now. Thank you. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, item 11 is approved major amendment to an approved site plan for First Watch, which is a restaurant within the Bay Arbor Place development. This is a request for a major amendment to an approved site plan to construct a 3,500 square foot restaurant within the Bay Arbor Place development. The background is in your packet. Per the attached staff report, staff recommends approval. 
because this is a quasi-judicial proceeding. I'm asking the city attorney to handle this item from here. So anyone that wants to speak on this issue, if you could please stand up, raise your right hand, and be sworn under oath. Marie? Looks like you're the only one. You swear the, tel the testimony you're about to give is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, if you could make your presentation on behalf of the, uh, the city, please. Marie Daphne, Planning and Redevelopment Director. Um, this is a major site plan amendment, as the city manager said. The property is located in Bay Arbor Place. <laughs> Come on, Adam. He just got awarded and he's already slipping. I know. Oh, okay, great. Slipping back there. <laughs> okay, it's located at Bay Arbor Place. It's actually the last um, area in the development that um, is open for well, redevelopment. Originally, it was slated for a, a bank, a 3,500-square-foot bank. And now the applicant is proposing to construct a 3,500 foot restaurant. Whoops, sorry. So you can see there it's located on the east end of the existing development. Okay. Um, and there is just a picture of it. The, the property is vacant. Um, I think it's utilized for parking right now. And restaurants are permitted uses in the C2 district. Um, this will be a restaurant, it will be a breakfast, lunch, so it will not be um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So the hours of operation will be, uh, I think, 7 to like 2 or 3. Good so day. the parking should accommodate that. I apologize, and I haven't found it. Well, we're going to have to take back Adam's award, aren't we? I know. Okay, and there's an elevation. It's located along the temporal corridor. Um, and it's consistent with the existing development, and it meets all the architectural requirements of the temporal quarter. Um. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, there was some concern about parking uh, when the um, development was initially approved. In 2004, there was 269 parking spaces approved. Um, but not all of them were constructed, and um, the applicant now proposes to add 14 additional parking spaces. So there'll be a net gain of um, 278 parking spaces for the project. Uh, the applicant has also submitted a parking study that shows that the parking is adequate for the site. So the staff's recommendation is approval of the major amendment uh, to an approved site plan to construct the 3,500 square foot. Restaurant. And I'd like to enter the staff report into the record. And if you have any questions, I'll try. Any questions for staff? We swore nobody else in, correct? There was no one else that was sworn in. I don't know if the applicant is even here. The applicant. Anybody here? For, okay. Yeah. Did you want to? Did you want to speak? If you do, we just got to swear you in. Okay. If there's no presentation from the applicant, then we need to open it out to the public for proponents or opponents. Anybody in favor of this that would like to speak on it? Well, they didn't. I'd swear him, I would swear them in if they stood up. Anybody for this? Anybody against it? Okay, seeing no one will close the public portion of this item. And for discussion purposes, can I get a motion? Got a motion. Second. Aye. Motion and a second. Discussion? Anybody? I, have? I would say I'm very excited about this. It's always great to have more brunch and breakfast options. And personally, there's a first watch that opened near the Tech Data headquarters in Clearwater. And it's very popular. Um, we eat there for lunch and breakfast all the time, and I'm really impressed with how they've changed their menu um, recently. There's a ton of healthy and organic options and juices and salads, and so they've come a long way. I'm really sure. happy to see that they're interested in the city. My beautiful wife and I have eaten first watch in, out of the uh, across the countryside many yeah. times. But one thing, and there, and there won't be any traffic at night. There won't right. be any parking at yeah. night. Yeah, actually, I was... Uh, because of the fact that they close at 2.30, because I looked online just to see what time it was. Yeah, the parking. It's not going to have any, any impact, I don't think, on the parking that's over there now. Maybe just lunch time. But. I, I, you know, even when it's busy at night over there, you can still find the space. It just means you got to walk a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
I love first watch. I'm so excited. You just love food. <laughs> Can't wait. It could be first watch, second watch, third watch. I, was, I wish it was opening up today. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. I guess this is my only concern, and I've eaten it first watch, and I think the restaurant itself and your recent your comments about the menu is great. My biggest concern is and has always been, uh, obviously, I live in Bay Arbor, and it, I was involved in that process before I even came on council, and we, in fact, changed our guidelines for parking as a result of Bay Arbor because um, you've got Tijuana Flats, you've got Rumba, you've got Salt Rock, you've got Hot Tuna, Wooden Ladle, and now this, that under, are being parked under the previous guidelines, which is just retail as opposed to the increased of, and that has, is what has caused the problem um, in Bay Arbor. I guess, I, I guess maybe I do have a question of staff. Um, and I know, I know, I don't know how many we're losing out of the grass space to replace the footprint, but there's clearly probably more than the 14 spaces of people that park there. And I, I think that we've talked, and I talked with Al, is that although those 14 spaces get taken, it's more out of convenience because there are spots in the back. My biggest question is that, although we all just said that we love First Watch, there's no guarantee that that's going to be there for the duration. What would happen if something else came in as a restaurant and is you know breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and bar, and everything else. What would what would happen then? I think that's a business decision of the management company or the owner of the the um, the Arbor Place. Okay. Um, we did though go this week, well last week, um, and do a site visit Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to see if there was any excess parking. And Monday, and Wednesday there was over 20 spaces, and then Friday over 50 additional parking At spaces. At what time of day? Noon. Okay. And I guess then the, I know that the, I know that the um, landlord at one point had looked at there's a stormwater pond in the back um, that you could it's kind of a vault without a top on it but you could retrofit that and put some parking on it but I think the cost was very prohibitive um, from doing it. What's the what's the resolution if it becomes a problem and who determines if it's a problem? Well, I think the property manager. I mean, that will be their decision. Um, we can do something similar to. What we do with Park Avenue Plaza, we encourage them to provide valet parking, and there's many restaurants that have valet parking. And, you know, I think that the other businesses in there will strongly object if they can't get their customers in. If well, parking and which leads to my next point, and I don't know if we've revisited this because I believe there's some new ownership in there, but Astor Properties at one time was being talked to about <laughs> in the evening providing some kind of an agreement uh, for additional parking. I indicated that I'm a resident of Bay Arbor, which is right behind there, as is Al. And initially, when Bay Arbor was going in there, we were very concerned about the traffic coming out onto our street now that we've got those pork shops out there. But the bigger concern, and I don't know if the signs are still there or all the signs, was we didn't want to happen what happens in a lot of cases is they can't find a spot, so they park on our entrance road into our neighborhood, causing you know traffic concerns and parking problems. and site distances and all of that. So if we could we have to enforce no parking. Yeah, well, well I, can we check and make sure that the no, I know they went overboard the first time, but um, the, the objection was it's it's difficult already to get out of there. And now we're adding even more traffic to, to come out into a somewhat now, I think even. Is it really that difficult to come out of there? Yeah. Because I've never had a problem leaving there, honestly. It's, do you come out on my street? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, I'm parking happy. back. Yeah. yeah. It, it can be at rush hour. You know, if you're, the worst time is when you're leaving, when people are getting out of work and everybody's coming out of there. And, and um, you know, we just had a huge four car pile up right. coming out of there because they've put those pork shops in there that they, the DOT, um, put them in there. And so now you either got it, well, I know they're doing it. They're, they're cutting through Bay Arbor and the uh, plaza cutting across and making U-turns, and I don't think people, we were talking before with the deputy, that I don't think people, A, realize how fast cars travel, and B, they don't know what kind of a radius they need to make a, a U-turn, and so they start making the U-turn and don't realize that they need two, if not all three lanes, and so um, the volume of U-turns because of this is a lot bigger now, so that it's, it's really become a, I was talking to Al earlier, the difference before they put those pork chops in was that you could either come out of Bay Arbor Plaza or Bay Arbor where I live, and we could pull into the median, and you could take the first lane, you know, because you could go left or, you know, whichever direction you're going. Now, you, if you're going to make a U-turn, you need two or three lanes, even if you go up to the traffic light, but a lot of people aren't um, going up to the traffic light. Like the deputy said tonight, he caught somebody, he was, 
Was he going it turned into the second lane? Is that what it was? <coughs> The, the guy that made the U-turn that you pulled over because he cut somebody off because he thought they were in the... Here, Saint Drive. Oh, same, but it's the same <laughs> scenario. The issue with, with this area is people coming out want to make an immediate U-turn at, at Shady Oaks. Mm -hmm. So they wait and backs up traffic, which causes the traffic pattern that you're talking about. <laughs> when, when you enter a roadway, you're supposed to enter the right lane. And then you work your way over. People want to Get over to the third lane immediately, so they make their U-turn. Yeah, right. Causes backups, causes backups for you trying to get out of your neighborhood, as well as from um, Bay Arbor, Emerald the Street, em uh, Emerald Bay, Emerald Bay. Right. Same thing. People want to get all the way over, so they can make a U-turn to go back, and and that's to right. The right lane. And that's really not the discussion item tonight, but it definitely an increase of traffic is definitely something that. Uh, you know, we got to be conscious of, and the fact that, you know, as great as First Watch is, they, you know, there may be something else that wanted to go in there. So This doesn't address your, your, uh, your concern about what's happening with Bay Arbor itself and, and, and with this new unit that's going in there, but, this, but the city manager, Al, is talking to him about that U-turn mm -hmm. as of today and yesterday. Well, they took, the DOT took the no U-turn signs down. So but we're well, putting two, them back up. Yeah, right. we, we have them, but so at any rate, it's kind of taken a situation that was bad and made it bad in a different way. But my my concern is really over the volume of traffic there, and and uh, you know as long as the landlord is prepared to address it when it becomes an issue for, it's not something. So it's not Marie. It's not something that we would be involved in, uh, other than maybe the resolution if they needed to create some additional parking or valet or. Well, this would be a question for the city attorney, but we could have a condition on the approval of the site plan that um, in the event that there is a parking issue that, you know, they'll be responsible for curing it, similar to the development agreement that we had for Woodland Square. Um, and so maybe an option would be the Astro Products, you know, some kind of cross-access parking agreement with Astro Products or valet parking or whatever. And you're saying that they, who would be the they, the would be the property management? Yeah, the management or the property owner. Yeah, okay. Tom? Well, they're not part of this application, so... They being the, the developer, I mean yeah. the plaza owner? It, the applicant is 3687 Tampa Road Crossings, LLC. Are they the owners? I'd have to check on that. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, is that if these are not the owners, that you couldn't be placing mm -hmm. uh, conditions upon the owner. Um, they are the owners. Okay. Well, is that 3687 Tampa Road Crossings LLC just then the owner of the, this parking lot area? It's not the entire. The entire parcel. Okay, so if they're the applicant, then yes, you could put a condition on it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I mean, is that, what's council think of that? I just, you know. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if there's a parking issue, we want them to address it, so. And they would want to address it, I would think. I don't know. You know, it, it meets all the requirements. I, I was surprised that it was something that required a vote, actually. But because um, it's a substantial change. Major modification. Major modification. Got it. But I'm not a big fan of putting on extra restrictions that I don't, I don't know that we really need it. I'm in your plaza a lot during the day. I do the dry cleaners, you know, on flats, whatever, and I don't think there's a parking issue around noontime. I just kind of agree with what Eric's saying. Well, oh, and, and my point was is that if that's not what's there 10 years from now, you know. Yeah, it may not always that's be. That's true, too. Watch. I mean, it may not, it may not council be. Council 10 years from now. Huh? <laughs> I don't care. I just, I was bringing it up for discussion. Not, and it has nothing to do with me living back there. I just, I, I know well, the parking is you know, I mean, there's two different issues we were talking about earlier. One was an issue with traffic, right. which is relevant to the parking. No, I agree. I just right. was adding I, that. You know, I just haven't seen there being a real big parking problem in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it earlier that they're parking on what will be this site plan because it's it's a shorter walk than walking from the but back. But the market the was probably going to drive that. I mean, if you suddenly can't get parking and you want to go there, you're not going to go there. Yeah, you're going to go somewhere else. Yeah, All right. your Uber or take your car. Lease there you go. Right. House in Bay Arbor and golf cart up there. Ride your bike you when we have our pedestrian. You could walk. Yeah. Walk some. yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, do, I just threw, I wanted to throw. Some I do want to say one thing, Mayor, about the traffic. I've lived at East Lake Oaks. My house backs up to the road on Tampa Road. It's the first time since I lived there since 97 that there have been two major accidents 
where the traffic was backed up all the way to Curlew. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Yeah. And I talked to the fire department about it, and they said uh, it was because someone did a U-turn and there was an accident. Yeah, that was last week or something. But that's a different subject. I, yeah. just, I was dovetailing on, on the thing, huh? We're never going to get rid of bad drivers. I know. No, I agree. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I, conditions or no conditions, I'm, I'm fine. I just wanted to have the dialogue about the, the parking. If it's not a problem, then it, you know. It will never have to be addressed. Do you so have it's to really call the roll, or can we just vote? Because we already made a motion on this one. We made a motion in a second. Yes, for the site plan. Yeah. So my suggestion is do it by roll call vote because it is a quasi judicial hearing. Okay. So that if there are any dissenters, then we make note of that. I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to. I don't want somebody to vote no just because of the variance or the, no, the condition. So if they if they're overall, I mean, I like the overall thing. I just. Any thoughts? If not, call the roll. And so is this for the, the amendment motion as on the floor. is or with the yeah. condition? No, no, no without the condition. Without condition. It would have to fail with, that, with as it stands to add the condition. Okay. Um, Council Member Seidel? Yes. Vice Mayor Sarecki? Yes. Council Member McKee? Yes. Council Member Beavis? Yes. Mayor Beavis? Aye. Major amendment to an approved site plan for first watch within the Bay Ever Place development is approved with five votes for and zero against. And I'm just glad we had a dialogue because... Yeah. yeah. If, it'll take care of itself if it's, if it's an issue. So. Ready? Yep. Item number 12, approve the 2018 Union Cyclist International, or UCI, BMX World Cup Agreement for the provision of the BMX Supercross World Cup in Oldsmar for September 15th and 16th, year 2018. This is a request for council approval for an agreement between the city and the Union Cyclist International to stage, host, organize, and promote the seventh and eighth stages of the BMX World Cup in 2018. If approved, this would be the only stages being held, sorry, these would be the only stages being held in the United States for that year. The financial requirements are presented on the cover memo in your packet, as well as the details of both anticipated revenue and expenses to host the event. I've asked our Leisure Services Director, Felicia Donnelly, to make herself available to answer any questions posed by council. Staff recommends approval. Thank you. Uh, need a motion for discussion? So moved. Second. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? My discussion would be that I wouldn't approve it. I was reviewing it um, and I was asking Al, but it doesn't, UCI has no financial skin in the game at all. We bear the entire cost of it. Um, I yeah, I, I think the $125,000 price tag, yeah. and that's assuming that our director is able to have the time and raise the 80000 in sponsorship fees. Yeah. I love us doing these events, but I like the events that are pretty much break even, mm -hmm. or even if we make a little bit of money, it doesn't have to be big money makers for us. But putting out one hundred twenty-five to potentially over $200,000. You no, know, you have to have faith in what we're doing. And I think that's a very important to have that event because it is a very famous event, or it will be. And uh, it's the same thing with the BMX track. We okayed that. It's not the same as the BMX track. Well, it brings in the same kind of reputation. I just think when you look at the other races and even the other agreements we're going to vote on, the expense is a tenth of that price. And I also feel like, like I said, there's no skin in the game from UCI. They're not putting in any, you know, anything financially. We have to cover the entire cost. It just doesn't seem like a real agreement or partnership. If and there's also some other issues, as I understood it, with the actual agreement itself in terms of the venue uh, <laughs> and the event that there's any litigation, the indemnification, <coughs> it's, it's all one-sided. I mean, it's the kind of thing that... It's not the wise thing to do, I don't think, because it has that kind of exposure. And, you know, those things really happen. Do we know where this was held last year? Did Sorry? We, was this held last year in a different city? or what, Please, do, you know what, you do you know what city it was held in? I'm just curious I have no idea. what other cities maybe have already hosted this. It was, it was held last year in Sarasota. Okay. And so, but the race was a different format. They only had elite riders, and this one we're hoping to combine it with, um, it would be combined with an amateur racing element as well. Okay. And can we address the potential of sponsorship to offset some of the cost and 
I guess, is that true that they don't have any financial skin in the game, I guess? Is that true? Looks like, I mean, from it, what I see, it looks like that's true, but you know more about it than I do. That, that's correct. They are sending, they will send down staff. They have, um, they asked us to provide 110 room nights for their staffing to come, and then they take care of the timing on site. So they have in-kind service donation. So they have some investment into um, the event. Who secures the rooms? We do. Who pays yeah, for the we security have to pay of the, for yeah. the rooms? Yeah. So. Uh, hmm. um, was there a reason? I'm just curious. Was there a reason why they didn't choose to go with Sarasota again this year, or Sarasota didn't have the option to? I'm just wondering if there was like another like. Well, if Sarasota hosted it last year, if it was so acclaimed, why wouldn't they have wanted to rehost it? Rehost it, yeah. If it was, I'm I'm not sure of who all submitted bids. So you submit a letter of interest and you submit a, um, a letter of interest to the UCI, and then they responded favorably. But I'm not privy to how many other if they received any other. I I just don't know the answer to that. And this is kind of a question that I don't know that we know the answer to. Maybe you do. Um, being on the TDC, I know at some point we're going to apply for TDC funds. I assume that this would play a component into um, making the cause for getting funding for our entire sports complex. Just This would be one component of it. And having said that, and, and I hear what Jerry's saying, but I also hear and see the, the financial component. I mean, I think when we put that facility in, <coughs> Several years ago, the thought was is that you know we would we would have the Gator Nationals and we would continue to grow and hold world you know we threw the term out there world events but I don't know that at the time when we were discussing it and we even knew really what that meant from a financial and commitment standpoint so um, it's just something that that it it can be a big success for the city of Oldsmore it can and also it can be a problem it's just something that. We're going to have to make well, a decision about it. Is it a pretty heavy weighter, do you think, on on the TDC? I mean, I'm on the TDC, so I mean, I think, I think it definitely. I know T Tampa International is very uh, interested in it and helping sponsor. I think they've up, they've either up the Gator Nationals or they've up the sponsorship for that. We don't have anything in writing, though, correct, from any of these? We we don't have anything in writing. And in response to your TDC application for the Old Smart Sports Complex, that. The room night creation from the collective three events on site is being projected out for that. So it's a part of the application for the economic impact because TDC is interested in creating room night visitation. So that's that is a factor in that application, certainly. Felicia, your opinion, your thoughts. Y yes, your thoughts, because you're going to be a big part of this. So you tell me. And I suppose they'll want to know also, what do you think about it? Put yourself out on the line. I've always put you out there. So go ahead. You know, I, I, I follow I, I the decision of the city council <laughs> <laughs> for that. Well, look, we put you in the position you are because we had great confidence in you. If you think this is a, a, a good thing for the city, I'm going to support it. If you think we can get sponsorships, I'm going to support this. But I, but I want to know what you think. Well, and before you answer that, I guess to that question, if it's okay, Councilmember Beaverlin, um, we haven't done this. I don't think even when you came on board, we had an idea of the you know what was involved with this kind of an event. We've been always used to dealing with USA BMX and and all that. Do we have any feel for Sarasota? Uh, to Councilmember McGee's question and what they if they. If they had it to do over again, would they do it? I know you said it's a kind of a horse of a different color, but. I, I don't think Sarasota would do it over again um, in the format that it was executed. So having said that, this event is a new format. So um, UCI realized that it had challenges with the Sarasota event specifically. That's the one that I heard feedback from. And so, and it, and it really had to do with you know, 200 to 250 elite riders, and then the cost of the event production, and then creating economic impact. So 200 to 250 elite riders, while the room nights will be longer than Gator Nationals, was the ROI there for to support a continuing event. So 
when um, when we've had conversations, we have um, told them that we would not enter into an agreement or be interested at any rate until unless we had the um, the ability to have a local event at the same time. So through support of USA BMX, although I, I don't have a contract yet, the SSA, which is the next item for you all, would run a concurrent event at the same time as the elite. So the UCI established a schedule to where that could work. So because of that, we're the first one to do that. We're also limited to Florida. Because of the way the BMX sanctioning bodies are, we're the only state with a state association. So the Sunshine State Association is only in Florida. So the only tracks that they would consider, even consider, is probably Sarasota and us. So they, Sarasota was last year. And so the, the event is a completely different event than it was from Sarasota, which is great because it offsets our costs and it creates the, the increased um, revenue from a bunch of different sides, right? From parking, from concessions, because you have more people on site. But then it also creates the heads and beds that, that um, you would need to, to even consider something like this. And this is televised, although not necessarily live, but it, but it ultimately will be televised? Um, it, uh, it, yes, so UCI, by reading their organization guide, so they'll bring in their own broadcast trucks. It's, UCI is, is the head sanctioning body of all things cyclists. So UCI does a very famous race called the Tour de France. Yeah. So that's part of the same organization. So their media reach from the international spectrum is a very wide net. So they would bring a lot of publicity to the city of Osmore. We wouldn't get the revenue from the TV advertisements, but we would get the exposure from, from that event. Well, we would definitely, from my understanding, is that we would get the international exposure from a media side through the partnership with UCI. And we would bring a lot of money into the city. And we would bring what? A lot of money into the city. Not to the city coffers, but into the city. Um, Hotels, restaurants. Yeah, so the, the, the economic impact, um, part of that equation is so the economic impact roughly for USA BMX for Gator Nationals brought in 2,600 room nights last year. The, these stays, so it's about the same amount of people, but the stays are longer because elite riders don't fly to the United States to race and stay for three nights. Those elite riders will see them stay for a longer period of time. Now, my personal experience with that is through the Ironman. So the city of Clearwater hosted Ironman. Well, elite athletes came down for one race for three weeks. I don't know how long they'll stay, but they'll stay for a longer period of time than a national event. There's no guarantee, though, that they'll stay in the hotels here in Oldsmar. There's no guarantee of that at all. I mean, we have the we have limited um, limited service hotels. So if somebody wanted a full service hotel, the closest one is either Safety Harbor Spa or Ennisbrook. There's you know they could stay at the beach. I can't I can't. We do encourage by rebates. So part of that, you guys, in the budget, there's like a travel rebate item. And so the way that works is that the, um, the revenue, you get a rebate back from the hotels directly. So we would be, we would be pushing the BMX uh, community to our five hotels at discounted rates and then rebated back to us. That's, that's the way all these major sports definitely the work. Travel, the, the travel rebate on the projections is $1,000, right? It, yeah, I, it's, I, not, it's not meaningful compared to no. the expense. Where, where do you, how, I realize you haven't spent time actually going out and working on this part of the project because it has to go through here first, but on the 80000 that you have uh, projected in sponsorships, have you had any initial discussions that would lead you to feel confident that that's an obtainable number? I feel that... 75,000 of that is very competent, or I, I'm confident in that. So um, uh, visit St. Pete Clearwater 
has said that they want to invest 50,000. It's a verbal agreement. And then I had a conversation with another sponsor who I think is gonna be at that 25 level. I felt that's a conservative number in the sponsorships. Although you can't, just because you have two right out the gate doesn't mean that you're gonna get a ton more of the bigger dollar ones. But, I mean, I would assume that there's a reason why you put the estimate is it's gonna cost about 125,000, I mean. Do you feel you can get some more sponsors? I, I feel that we can get some more, but I, I, and again, the, the, it's harder to estimate the bigger sponsors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the easy ones, the lowest sponsorship level that I would even entertain on something like this is 2,500. And so, you know, I suspect that we'll get local community support for those numbers. But when it comes to cutting a check for 50,000 or 25, those are, those are fewer and far between, especially for a first year event. Um, and I guess my biggest problem is them not having any skin in the game. I mean, I don't feel like it's fair that we're paying for their site visit, their lodging, their per diem for their employees to come here. I would feel a lot more comfortable and you would save $30,000 of the cost if we weren't funding. They actually, as I understand it, there is a requirement that uh, people, I guess two point people attend training is it in Switzerland uh, as, a, as part of the bid package? Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know. I, I'd be interested in some of Tom's thoughts as it relates to the agreement because, I mean, there's real liability there that we don't have the same kind of liability, certainly not the same kind of expense uh, with some of the other events that we host. And so we should know the difference. Yeah. My two cents worth, I was not happy with this agreement from the beginning. I'm not happy with it now. There is extreme amount of exposure to the city. I've talked to Felicia a couple of times. We've had numerous emails back and forth about my concern about this agreement. I'm concerned about no skin in the game was the biggest thing. Page after page after page of notes as to are we aware how much this is going to cost us? Um, I'm very concerned about the fact that in the indemnification provisions, that if there is any accident, anybody gets hurt, we're going to be responsible for it, whether they, they were negligent or not. UCI can be negligent, and we're still responsible for their negligence. The only thing that they're responsible for under this agreement is gross and willful misconduct. It has to be way over the top. Are they, they're responsible. So I'm very concerned about those liabilities. Uh, besides no skin in the game, I'm very concerned about um, the uh, the enforceability of the agreement. Um, if we have to, um, you know, challenge them on some of their obligations, whatever obligations they have, they don't comply. We have to go to Switzerland, and um, we have to deal with this in Switzerland. And, and obviously, you know, we'd have to hire a lawyer in Switzerland. In addition to that, it's, it wouldn't be in a court of law. It's in a court of arbitration, which is even more expensive because you're having to pay for either a one or a three arbitrator court to make a decision, and most of the time their findings are not binding. And so then we'd have to follow it up with a court action after that in Switzerland. And I don't know the law of Switzerland, but I can tell you that um, it's not going to be like it is here in Florida. Um, and so I'm very concerned about that provision, the governing law and the arbitration provision. Um, and um, so in comparison to the agreements that we have, like with the, and we're putting on the Gator Nationals, night and day. It's night and day different. Yeah, and see, I think, well, you know, first off, I don't, I don't, I don't think we should start getting in the habit of writing this big of a check for something that's not going to have, it's not going to, like, it's not like some kind of capital improvement's going to be left behind, right? You know, when you look at the things on here, it, you know, it's, we're paying to put on their event, and we're hosting it, but we're paying for all of it. Um, and I, I don't think we're in a position to start spending that kind of money when there's not <laughs> something that's going to be left behind out of it other than goodwill. I mean, Number one, number two, I think sometimes there is stuff that you really want to do that you're willing to take some risk on. But I would say this, I could never support this because of the exposure 
that we are accepting for the city, mm -hmm. I don't I don't think that's the right thing to do. Why don't we just call the Well can I withdraw my motion, Tom? Why don't we just vote on it then and yeah, quit talking about it? Well, I, I mean, I, I think people have the right to, to express their, I haven't even really said anything. We have the right, they have the right, but we can talk about it all night long. Let's just vote on it and go on well, to the next one. I'll, I'll, run the meeting. I'll run the meeting if that's okay, <laughs> if you don't mind. No, you're running the meeting. I said it'd be nice if we did that. I know. Well, I think there's some definite concerns in it and maybe a couple of questions, too. I guess my question is of Al or Felicia or Tom in this negotiations. Two, two questions is, is this pretty standard for UCI? in their agreements, whether it's the Tour de France or the, the deal that they did in Sarasota, is this pretty standard contracts for them? Um, and then the second question is, since they're not going back to Sarasota, is there any leverage that we have to get them to change some of these things? Or is it, you know, either we take it or we don't? You know, this could throw what, I assume this would throw a wrench in event seven and eight of this world championship, I think, if if they can't get us to come to the table. Is that, I, I'm not putting words in anybody's mouth, but. I, I have never um, coordinated events with them directly before. I will tell you that I did forward um, Tom's comments to them, and then what I got was their best. They said, this is our responses, this is what we're willing to do. And so, you know, whether we can go back to them and say, you know, we're not going to approve it unless you change it. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't know the answer. Let me ask you, uh, uh, let's bring it maybe even further to the forefront. If this be the case, why even bring it to council? Well, well they need our if feedback. It, have, it has to come to council. No, it doesn't have to come to council. Okay. I would disagree, but, well, they, they can't do it without us. Well, I, they, uh, they can't do it with us either. So if... If Tom has that kind of doubts about it, and that's been presented to the city to the city manager and to yourself, well, I, I, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. I'm not finished. You're the one now. that wanted to move on. And if it's that much concern that the that the city's going to be liable for everything, I would just as soon it never come before council. Well, and I don't think, and I think it does only because collectively as a body, because of Sunshine Laws, we can't really have the dialogue that we're having today about all these items and hear everybody's opinions. Okay, let me ask you this then. How, how do you think about it? Well, you, know, you know, we're the five people up here, but, but other people are involved in it deeper than we are before, we, before it came to here. Before he answers that, can I ask what, the, what my other question, which was, um, so if we're the only game in town for them, I guess my question is from a time sensitivity standpoint, so what if we don't approve it tonight, let's just say, and it goes back to the drawing boards, what's our, what's our window of opportunity that, you know, if it came back at the first meeting in January with some changes, it, I mean, has the horse left the barn or I, I, maybe we don't know the answer to I that. I can't, I can't really well, answer that. because of the date of the seminar, I would say the horse has left the barn because that session is the beginning of December, which would be before our next meeting. And as Felicia said, <clears throat> she did approach them about concerns that Tom had. There was some limited movement on the agreement, but they did basically draw a line in the sand and said, this is what we're willing to do. Obviously, staff recommended approval, but we absolutely understand that there are plenty of issues of concern here. I would say we would have brought it to, if we weren't going to entertain it, our overall goal was to try and have as many events at the track as we can. Right. This is one of them. This is the big international body to have it in. Because of the expense, we didn't, we wanted to be transparent. We could look at it like this is an expense over $25,000. So from a purchasing standpoint, <coughs> it would be something that should come in front of you anyway. So I don't disagree with Mr. B's point about we didn't have to bring it to you. But the overall theme for us when we built the track was to try and come up with as many events as we can. Well, and, and, and to that point, I would think we would hear the opposite argument. If we, can't, we didn't do it, move forward, and the council had no input on why we did or didn't move it forward. So, so. So, so earlier I was asking, is there, Tom, can I withdraw my motion I made so that we could discuss this so I can make a new motion, or do we need to vote on this? Um, you can withdraw your motion, okay. um, or you can vote it down. 
Okay. Uh, which, whichever your pleasure is, but my suggestion is that since it's a motion to approve, that would be the appropriate way to do it. Okay, then vote And on. then when you vote it, if there was three of you that voted no, then we would not be moving forward with the okay. agreement. And the, mo the motion, just to, at, at least this is my intent when we do this, is the motion to approve is for discussion purposes only. It doesn't necessarily indicate how anybody's going to yeah, vote. Yeah, no, I know. I just, okay, I, I, just I, yeah. I wanted to make sure, you know, if I need to make a new motion, but we can go ahead and vote on it. I'm ready. I'm all for having the, the, the events here, but after, you know, after our discussion here, it, it, it's obvious to me that I don't want to put us in a position where we're going to be, be sued out of Switzerland. Are there other events, not necessarily UCI World Cup events? I assume there are other events that that ultimately we could continue to work towards to get here. I mean, we're adding that the other one that's on here, and there there aren't. Okay. So so UCI is able to use their strict contractual requirements because they're it. So okay. from a sanctioning perspective, the only so the USA BMX is our United States sanctioning. And so there's now 330 tracks uh -huh. in the United States, and there's six supercross tracks in North America. So while we can request, and I've already informally requested another national event, that's unlikely because there's only, they only have a handful of them, about one a month. And so, and then the SSA is the other event for us here in Florida. But I don't really know the long-term uh, sustainability of that organization because of the way that BMX was. Uh, um, there used to be two sanctioning bodies; they collapsed into one. And SSA is kind of on the side. They're the only state. Florida is the only state that has an SSA. So I don't know if that'll be around for mm -hmm. a long time. Get absorbed. So. Felicia, is the SSA event, it's not dependent on this UCI event. I mean, you mentioned that it was going to help bring additional riders at the same That's, time. But that, that, that event will still continue with or without the UCI agreement. We do that. I don't know that for an SSA event in September. We have one on the agenda for January. Okay. That one we have a contract for. SSA may not have the interest if we don't have the UCI event. Okay. So they're, they, or they may have more. Maybe they or would they have. may have more. I, I, I really don't know because it was kind of a, a deal to get. It came together, but um, you know, UCI. This what this is the pathway to host a world championship. UCI wants you to host a international event at this scale yeah. before you can be eligible for a world championship. That's what they have said. Right. Now, Houston is hosting one, and they've never hosted anything before, but they're building a new track. But we didn't have a formal agreement yet either for the SSA portion. No. Okay. So really September. it's right. no loss as of right now because there's nothing even Or, but, or the potential do. to get them in yeah, September exactly. if they yeah. wanted to do it. All right. I, this is, and I'm ready to move on, but the, so this is, a, this is a qualifier. I assume the verbiage of a championship is tenfold this in cost-wise, I would think. I don't know. Do we have an idea of how much a world event is? Yes. Okay. So I Do know I, hear it? I can tell you what Rock Hill paid because I talked to them, right? Mm -hmm. So it, the event cost about, I think they said $1.8 million <clears throat> to put it on, and they, um, they projected a $30 million economic impact. I'd be curious for to that see event. that $30 million detail. Right. Okay. What about ROI for their... How much was it? How much of it was? I don't know what their revenue was because when I was talking to them was during the World Championships. I only knew what the expense side was there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the what the revenue offset at that point was. I mean, if that was something we were going to do, we would certainly ask the TDC or oh, yeah. someone else to help with that cost. Oh sure, but so. you know, I mean, and yeah. for them to have some skin in the game. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the, that is definitely a frustration. Is that there's virtually no skin. They have no liability and they have no financial and they, interest in it at all. I'm yeah, they do. Their vote. financial interest is they're the ones that make the money on it. Right. <laughs> you know, right? That's it. Okay. Anything else you want to add for the good of the cause? I'm not sure this is going the way everybody had hoped, but I, I tend to agree. I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to paying some money if some of the exposures weren't there and there was some skin in the game. 
you know, and this was a relationship, you know. Well, the timing of everything's difficult because if Gabby was to have removed her uh, motion, I would have made a motion to table. Yeah. And at least be able to go back to them and say, That's look, right. it's a deal breaker, the language in here. We just can't get over it. Also might oper create an opportunity to find a little bit more about sponsors and that kind of stuff. But I recognize it's time sensitive at this point, isn't it? Yeah, we, we, don't, we, we can't don't. host it if they don't attend the event in early December in Switzerland. That's correct? my interpretation, but I think that's fair to say. Is and I don't think, to Tom's point, I don't think the agreement's going to get significantly better no matter what we do. No, because we did have that exchange with them, and yeah. they gave us their best and final. Yeah, but I don't think that I would be surprised if they're not surprised when they found out if it failed. So perhaps maybe it should fail and if they say why it's not just the money it's the liability and you know you know maybe maybe sarasota's more you know pro risk not as adverse i don't know the money doesn't bother me because you know I, I said when we built the the bmx track yeah. if we had to put up the whole damn mi a million bucks i'm all for it yeah. and look what has happened for to us sure i, I mean it I think it's the sum of all of these pieces that really... But the liability... If something terrible happened that weekend and we were responsible and had... The liability is scary. And a lot of bad things could happen at a... Well, spending you know, the money is not... A, uh, for me, spending the money is nothing. I can, is justify, nothing. I can justify the expense if yes, there were some other components absolutely. that weren't there. But the liability is kind I'm of cheap, scary. I say? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think if there some other things were answered, I mean... You know, they get all the revenue from the TV. We get whatever we generate in sponsors. You know, I mean, if there was any kind of a relationship, this is a completely one-sided, you know, relationship. And we're, you know, they're expecting us to put out a big dowry for it. So. Because I really don't want to have the city pay out a lot of money to have Tom go to Switzerland. Right? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be going. You would need to hire somebody over there. Well, I mean, I, and I assume that the training that's going on is going for all, not just segments seven and eight that are here. I assume it's, how, I don't know however many segments there are. How many times do they do this? I, I think there's eight, but there's, I think there's, uh, they divide those by the number of venues. So I think there's four venues and eight races. Okay. So maybe there's three venues and some of them got to double up or something. I don't know. Where are the other, I mean, are they even in the States? Obviously not. No. Said the only one in the States. For they only planned. do, yeah, they only do one in the United States if they do one in the United States. Well, again, we'll be here for my part, it. I don't mind spending the money because I think it, I, I think the city of Osmar will benefit from it, but I ain't. I'm not happy with the and I get it liability. That, I get it that, you know, you kind of have to host one of these qualifiers to get the World Cup, but I'd li also like to know what Rock Hill, ultimately, what their takeaway was from it, because I know it was a big expense. And, you know, and then when is Houston's? Houston is... 20? 2020 is Houston, and Houston did not have to follow their traditional method, which is hosting a World Cup before you host a World, but they're building a brand new standalone track similar to what Rock Hill has. Mm -hmm. So which the, site's a, the site is a cycling site. It's a little different than ours. So um, they've committed to them for then. But again, I don't know if they've signed contracts yet or any of that either. Okay. Can we move forward on it? Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just want to make sure that everybody got a chance to ask their questions. I think they're all important questions that, that you know, Felicia and, and Tom and Al have heard. You know what, what our thoughts are, and I still haven't heard Felicia's uh, recommendation. Yeah, I don't want to put her on the spot. For I, that. I, I, she I, the council gives me my direction. <laughs> Let me ask you this question: If this fails, are you going to be disappointed? Um, if this fails, are you going to be disappointed? The, the council gives me my direction. I, I, ex I execute no, she's smart wishes. She's experienced, man. She's like, really? Yeah. Try again, side <laughs> You try it again. I'm not, I'm not falling for that. You know, the first thing when I met with Al, the first thing I was concerned about was the expense. And then Tom saying the liability is just... Yeah, the liability is the bigger. I mean, the expense, sometimes you got to spend some money to, to get yourself in the queue for the bigger thing. Because as I mentioned, it gets us in the queue for the TDC money, for, you know, the, the you know, for that. 
Uh, I'm on the TDC. I don't mind defending the fact that we didn't do it. It wasn't because of necessarily the financial. It was because of the exposure. We know, built the we built the track. Yeah. Oldsmar yeah. built the track. We took the chance. Yeah. Yeah. So. But nobody was going to sue us yeah. if something happened. There's no other discussion. I'd like to do this by roll call just so we have the clarity. <laughs> and maybe by that you can tell us that we love to have them if they won't sue us. <laughs> well, the other thing I, th I think as well, I think in the future, perhaps when we know that we're planning for an event like this, at least as it relates to the economics, you know, maybe there's a longer term strategy of, of lining up sponsors way beforehand and so forth. I mean, where it's not suddenly, you know, as big of a gap in the future, but the liability will always probably be an issue, quite frankly. And the other thing, it's a time-sensitive issue. Maybe if you brought it to council, maybe sooner. I don't, yeah, I don't know that the I, timing I, lended it itself to right. that, but, you know. I don't know. I assume maybe they'll have one next year, too. You know, I don't know how, how often, do we know how often they do these? I don't know if we know the answer to that. And, and I can't predict well, what, they obviously what did will want happen or if they want to entertain a bid from us. Yeah, I would imagine after this, they probably aren't going to be super excited about it. Well, you know bid. Yeah, I'm, I mean, well, I mean, okay, so be it. I don't, you know, that's fine. We're not like super excited should... about the liability either. Yeah. So if you make something that you can, a pill that you can swallow, so at any rate, so. I'm ready to vote. No other discussion? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Seidel? No. Vice Mayor Saraki? No. Councilmember McGee? No. Councilmember Beaverland? Sorrowfully, no. Mayor Beavis? Yeah, no. Motion to approve the 2018 Union Cicli State International BMX Rope Cup Agreement fails with zero votes for and five against. Well, hopefully we can relay some of those thoughts. I mean, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> at the end of the day, we're responsible to the taxpayers and, you know, and, the, and our citizens from a, both a financial and a liability standpoint. So. And they may counter offer. Right. Yeah. Well, they may come, I may call them tomorrow and they may be like, oh, no, we'll do what you want. I mean, well, I, don't, I just know, don't that's, know. That's, that's really, in my opinion, the hopes. Yeah, yeah you I know, agree. I think sometimes uh, well, I think it's good for us to walk away from call them now. <laughs> And maybe to Tom's point, you know, they are, you know, they want us to come over there. They don't, know, you know. That's, maybe that's just the way they do things over there, you know. But uh, <coughs> you know, I think a, five, a zero to five vote probably says it sends a pretty they good message. They have plenty of money to have some skin in the game. That's all. I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yep. Item thirteen: Approve the Sunshine State Association Florida Cup Series Race Weekend Agreement for the provision of a Florida Cup Series qualifier and a Florida State Championship race. This is a request for council approval for an agreement between the city and the Sunshine State BMX Association, <coughs> known as SSA, to host the Florida Cup qualifier and a Florida State Championship race on January 12th through the 14th, 2018. The financial requirements are summarized on the cover memo in your packets, and I've again asked our Leisure Services Director, Felicia Donnelly, to make herself available to answer any questions from council. Staff recommends approval. Hi. Hello again. <coughs> But yep. Can you uh, kind of maybe recap? I think some, we may know, but just for the record, that this Florida Cup series is something that's kind of new. It's kind of evolved. It used to be, I forget what it used to be. What did it used to be called? Wasn't it, didn't it have kind of another name? NBL. Is that what it was? So I don't, I don't know the name of the, NBL, no. of the series, the Florida Cup series. No, no, wake up. He's not. Cindy. What was the Florida Cup Series called before it was the Florida Cup Series? Um, it didn't really have a formal formal name, did it? It was a state championship, but not the state championship. Okay. All right, so this one is sanctioned by USA BMX okay. for a state championship race. And it's kind and so it's sanctioned by them, but the logistics are handled by the SSA instead of USA BMX coming down to do it, SSA is coming over there in Okahili which is by West Palm Beach. So if we get sued, we don't have to go to Switzerland. Um, <laughs> no, and, and actually, um, we changed the venue from them. They wanted the venue to be down in Palm Beach, and they were fine with changing the venue to right here in Pinellas County. Mr. Mayor, would you like a motion? Yep. I'd like to make a motion to approve. I'll make a second. Second. What? Tom? I just wanted to address some issues, too, before sure. we move on. Okay, yeah, this one. is just for discussion. Any questions of Felicia on this particular item? No. Not at this point. Okay. No. 
discussion amongst ourselves and Tom if you want to go ahead and chime in first yeah well um, I had some thoughts on this one too with Felicia and, and um, you know it talks about the track being responsible for certain things even though the city and the BMX Association are the only partners in this in this agreement so um, I had made suggestions to change the word track to city throughout the agreement that has not been um, that has not been done um, this is the original version that I think that I saw so um, even though there were some suggested changes the changes had not been made um, so for example if the agreement is between Sunshine State BMX Association and the city of Oldsmore it says the event will be held at the track and then it goes on and it specifically says the track is going to be responsible for this and tracks going to be responsible for that but there is no such thing it has there, to be an entity uh, there is no, yeah the track the, yeah I, I i'm I, i'm sorry there's some confusion there's a a new agreement that they sent that they've changed those items that's not what's in the packet so, the city on them i had them change that specifically okay so we need to Make sure that the council is approving, you know, the correct agreement. Here, here it is. The one that's attached to the memo is not the correct. Mine says track. This says city, but up at the top it says here referred to as the event. There's the agreement. Yeah, it does say the city though in this. This, this version does. It's being passed down. Um, yeah. So. We just need to make sure that um, the correct agreement is actually being signed. Let me just look at this real quick. This is the correct one that um, that the city clerk has just passed down. I just you're happy with it. Um, so yes. Yeah, so. With the substitution of the track city issue, um, that's been resolved. So we can vote on this one? Yes, yes, sir. I just want to make sure that you're voting on this one. I'm going to pass it down so everybody else can see it. For them. Another copy. Alicia, do you want this one so you know what I was talking about? That's what's in the packet. Oh, I, ha I actually yeah. just, I have, have it the right one. here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the older version. <coughs> we have a motion in a second, I think. Well, I'd like to tell everybody who looks at it and the people that motion and second, are they comfortable? Good, I'm good. With, are you comfortable with your motion and your second? I am. Okay. Second? Okay. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't mean to jump in there and no, stuff no. on anybody's right. toes, no, that's fine. but, but need to be the right one. And that's because that's what we were all reviewing. For, so that's how you earn your keep, right? That's what we pay you. <laughs> Tom? Remember when you first come in this, came on this council, and I sat next to you, and I told you if I say something wrong, yeah, correct, jump in. Oh, he does. He's a, he, yeah. Correct. We have a motion and a, and a second on this. Any other discussion or questions of staff? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Five nothing. Thank you. Thank yeah, we're gonna sign that tonight. Okay. okay. Next. Item 14, and my apologies. My apologies for 13. It's I. Not sure what I did to get the wrong agreement in there, but I apologize. Number 14, approve the USA BMX National Championship Series event agreement with the American Bicycle Association to host the USA BMX Gator Nationals on February 23rd through 25th, 2018. This is a request for council approval for an agreement between the city and the American Bicycle Association to host the USA BMX Gator Nationals in February 2018, as previously mentioned. This will be the fourth time that the city has hosted this event and all of the previous events have been very successful. The financial requirements have been summarized on the cover memo in your packets. And once again, I've asked Felicia Donnelly, our leisure services director to be available to any, answer any questions from council, staff recommends approval. Any, any additional input? How, do, we, do they have an, an idea? I know we're, we're in off season, so you don't get typically as many international riders. We still got a fair amount. Last year, I don't know how many countries were represented, but we seemed like we had. I think we had 19 countries represented in that, and so it was like 19 different countries and 749 riders. Yeah. Okay, I knew we were down because we were over a thousand the, the one time. So, if you have nothing additional to add, I'll entertain a motion. So move. 
Second. Second. Any discussion from council on this? Tom, would you like to weigh in on this one? No. Okay. I'm comfortable with everything. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. 15, adopt resolution 2017-19, the final year end budget revision for fiscal year 2016-17. This is a request for council approval to resolution 2017-19, referred to as our year-end budget revision for the recently completed fiscal year. Each year, the city executes three budget revisions for council approval to appropriate reserve revenues to cover unanticipated expenses that may have occurred during the fiscal year. This year, the only funds that require adjustment are the general fund and the solid waste fund, as both funds were affected by unexpected expenses associated with Hurricane Irma. I will read the resolution by title only. And then I would be available to answer any questions from council. Staff recommends approval. All right, resolution 2017-19, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, revising the budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2016 and ending 7th, September 30th, 2017, authorizing the city manager and the director of administrative services to revise the existing budget. Mayor, that concludes the reading of resolution 2017-19. Thank you. I need a motion for discussion. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Pass five nothing. Anything else? That's it for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. City Clerk, you got anything? Um, while the qualifying period ended, and I want to congratulate officially Councilmember McGee and Councilmember Seidel for qualifying for their seats. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. I like how you qualified, and then you told the citizens of Patty, you can run now that I'm not, <laughs> now that I'm qualified. <laughs> yeah, I say it to them all the time. Uh, no, I'm, kid I'm kidding. Uh, city Council, um, we have one item on there. Consider the city clerk's annual compensation. If somebody wants to pull this, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I may have a motion to approve. Hold on. I wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Motion to approve what? We haven't approved. We don't have anything to approve yet, so. I'd like to ask a question. Sure. Has any of the... How many of the council has conferred with Ann on this? I have. Personally, okay. Have. That's one. That's good. You mean your review? I did my review. Yeah, I did my review. Not, not her review, her compensation. <laughs> her compensation. Her compensation. Well, let me, can I, if I could, real quick, um, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, she received a favorable uh, recommendation, which is the requirement of the resolution. Um, that the, she gets at a minimum the staff, uh, the uh, city, which was 3%. It's up to the council to do something other than that ab above, can't go below, but above. Last year, um, she did get a 5%, and that was because she completed the um, certification. I think we would all agree uh, that the clerk's office has, especially in the communications and marketing component of it, has done what the city council asked them to do, which was market the city. And it's kind of, it's kind of morphed into something really big that's taken a tremendous amount of Ann's time and staff's time and things like that and she's been able to manage that as well as the normal clerk duties. Um, and I would request 4%. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, if any, any other discussion or thoughts? What's, uh, because I don't remember off the top of my head, what, what, what was the increase in compensation for other uh, the three, department? 3% three three was the, mm -hmm. yeah, 3% and so, and last year we did the five for Ann with the certification that she got, so. Do we take the city, don't, do we not take the city uh, charter officials separate other than the employees? We do, we do, but they, they still have to follow the resolution that they, we can't say you get nothing because at a minimum, if they right. get favorable, they get the minimum. So I, will, I still would suggest 4%. This well, you, are this you making time. a motion? I, I'm making a motion. Okay. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Doing a great job. Yeah, that's a great job. Don't say it so loud. That gets on the minutes and everything. <laughs> Everybody's listening. Adam's back there taping it. She's marking tapes over there. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 I have nothing. I, I want to ask Thank a question. You. you know. There we go. <laughs> no, this is something. <laughs> You do a great job, by the way, even with the yeah, additional you do. with the additional load that you have. Tom dealing, yes. with, dealing with me. Now this is coming up later, I, I know that. Oh, the city the, the and 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 I am to blame because I was the mayor and all this kind of crap. We never gave Tom we never gave him an increase 
And I, I don't know, did, did, did sometime you finally had the aspirin? Last increase? a couple of years ago, didn't you? Last year. So, last year or the year before. So when does your compensation come up? Um, well, it, when the budget process is discussed, if I think that there is a need to increase it, I come to the city manager's office with a suggestion, and then he okay. will decide. I just want to make sure we don't forget you again. Oh, well, I appreciate that, but no, I'll, I'll jump in when okay. I'm... When I'm and that's fine, because we never jumped in. <laughs> Which is especially like, now that you have to hear our reviews. Not, you know, and, and, <laughs> we didn't suffer last time. Thank uh, you. That's, that's all that we have under city council, so we'll move to council comments, and I'll start with council member Seidel, since he qualified. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of comments. I think the Veterans Day event was really nice. Uh, I really thought your comments, you obviously put a lot of time and effort into it, and a lot of our citizens commented on that. I do think we probably need to make sure our speaker knows the time requirements. Um, and vet them. Well, I mean, I think her message did get across. You know, I, it was just kind of an awkward mm -hmm. uh, Way that that kind of unfolded, I felt bad for her. Actually, it was just too long, yeah. And uh, but anyhow, I thought it was a great event. Uh, thanks to all the citizens who came out and uh, supported uh, this year's fundraiser with uh, goals for a cause. Raised a lot of money, as the mayor talked about earlier. Um, very excited to uh, uh, get elected uh, back. Back. Well, it's not really elected, but you know, reappointed or whatever. Re however you want to say it. I know it's not really the way to. The powers envisioned it, but you know, it was a three-person race last time, so I'll take this pass. <laughs> but I do want to thank all the citizens and uh, wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and be safe. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And we'll go to our other qualifier, Council Member McGee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I am also grateful to have qualified and unopposed. That's always a nice um, blessing. Um, but greatly appreciate everyone that helped me get petitions signed, especially you, Eric, who helped me get a lot of petitions signed, and some of your friends also helped, and Dan, and, and Doug, and everybody. So um, I really appreciate the help. Um, I wanted to ask Kathy, how was your yard sale? How did it turn out? Was it successful? Did you raise a lot of money? It was successful. We raised 20, 2850 so we were very excited Excellent. about that. So thank you all for your support and all our efforts. Um, yeah, thank you for my picture frame. Were you going to say something? I was going to say, how's, where is he on the list? He's right at the top. He can He's make next. a call at any time. We're just Eight. praying and waiting. Yep. Thank you. Um, Are you still selling jam? I'm out of jam at the moment. Well, I, I was going to buy some more. <laughs> well, I'll Can't let you know that. when it's back in stock. Yeah. We did just get approved to be out at Christmas Wonderland for awesome. uh, a bake sale. Awesome. So we'll I'll be, be there for that. Thank you. And then um, lastly, happy Thanksgiving to all. I'm actually traveling tomorrow. So what a shocker. I know. But um, I wish everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. We're going to have to put up with your Facebook post of where you're at? Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Anything else? No. That's all I have. We'll go to the Vice Mayor. Thank you, man. match Back and forth. First of all, I want to congratulate all the Citizens Academy. I graduated in what 2012, and that was a great—that's a great class. And like Doug, I think what you said is is right. It's changed. We got to look at the fire truck now. They play with the hose, shoot the water. Kind of fun so yeah, yeah, they've really improved it. And uh, congratulations to them. I want to congratulate Eric and Gabby on your victory. Looking forward to working with you and keep learning with you guys. Uh, for Tom, I wanted to say to you. I really appreciate you welcoming me into your office. I went to see Tom's office for his uh, evaluation. I made an appointment. I went down because I wanted to see that, and I wanted to say thank you. Your employees are great. Your, your uh, receptionist even sent me a, a thank you. So I really appreciate that, Tom. Nice thank office. you. Yeah. And. Uh, were they giving away hot dogs that day? No, no food. But I did go to Frenchie's and get stone crab. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would be a stop. It was around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Distance closet. He's got well to eat. He's got to eat every so many miles. I want to say one thing. What, what Eric said about the Veterans Day. I think all of us work really well as a team. I mean, Jerry, Gabby, everyone. Yeah. Did, but Doug, your speech was great. Thank Eric, you. you did great. Thanking all the city employees. It was. I think we really work well together, and it was a great event. 
And the last thing, I'm happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I don't know if you guys saw my granddaughter was here. She said hi to Gabby. Uh, she's from Buffalo with my, my youngest daughter. We're going to go down and see the grand boys tomorrow. So I'm really looking forward to spending the weekend with my grandkids. And what did she have today for the first time ever? A chicken McNugget. Oh, and no. She, and she her. said, wow. Oh, no. She bit it and she said, wow. <laughs> Early. Just like you, just like you. Yeah. <laughs> she had a, they gave her this little bag of french fries and she ate every one. Yeah. So she really enjoyed it. Oh. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Beaverlin? Yeah, just happy Thanksgiving to everybody and, uh, and, the, and the library, I, I guess they have received quite a bit of money from in the name of Ron. Uh, And then, in the name of Sean, and you know the library means a lot to me. Because <clears throat> whenever, whenever the library was built down there, everybody was mad at me. Everybody was mad at me. <clears throat> because I didn't want the library built next to the city hall, and I finally got <clears throat> two other votes, and we built the library down there. And Burke came up to me sometime later, and she said, you were right, and we were wrong. You, you would never have that library the way it is, sitting next to city hall. Award-winning library, yeah. So, <clears throat> yes, so... Uh, <coughs> I thank you all for everything you've done. I know at the last budget meeting, <coughs> I requested $5,000 more for you because you've never asked for anything. In all the years, they have never asked for an increase on anything. So I told Bruce, we need to put five, and I, I, I asked her, do you want any more? And she said, $5,000 would be great. <laughs> they could use it for other things. Thank you all. And, and I, I did wish everybody a Thanksgiving, didn't I? <clears throat> There's only one other thing. I know everybody's going to say <clears throat> this belongs to DOT, and it does belong to DOT, but coming out of Bel Air Village, there is not a walkway there, a sidewalk, mm. and it's very dangerous. It's extremely dangerous. And I would even say that if DOT will give us the permission, to extend that, I mean, it's dangerous mm -hmm. coming out on the curve of the road. Extend, extend that sidewalk, and also, Ann came up with the great idea of putting a, whatever they have there that tells you how many minutes you got to cross this road. Is that what you call it? A count timer? Pedestrian countdown is somebody else's right up. Pedestrian countdown. And, and I think that's important there. Someday y'all, someday y'all will be the age that I am, and they are down there, and and that means a lot. Because if you walk on a, well, you can't walk on it. You have to walk in the middle of the road going into a other village. And uh, just thank, thank you all. Thank you. I don't have much. Uh, congratulations to uh, Eric and Gabby. And I, oh, it, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations, Thanks, Eric. Jerry. Yeah, yeah. And, and I say this with sincere honesty. I know you were prepared to run against whoever might have run against you, and I had the utmost confidence that you two guys would do great. So, um, but it is nice to not have to run. So, uh, but I know you were prepared to do it. We don't enter them thinking that you're going to be not contended. So, um, <laughs> congratulations. Have a great Thanksgiving, and hopefully get to spend it with your family and eat too much turkey and watch football, fall asleep. Repeat, watch football, <laughs> fall asleep, <Goodbye>. repeat, <laughs> then have sandwiches the next day. Yeah, so I think the sandwiches the next day are the best part anyway. So, And if there's nothing else, city manager, you got anything? Ed, sure. attorney, clerk, Kathy, nobody?